Good afternoon. Um, this is Penny Parker with the Arthritis Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Diane George, who is with MMG um, uh, Rheumatology Group here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And uh, Dr. George is going to talk to us for a few minutes today about inflammatory arthritis. Dr. George, can you just tell us in a um, short summary, what is inflammatory arthritis? So usually when there's inflammation of the joints, there is swelling, um, sometimes warmth and um, often sm small amount of redness around the joints um, that results in pain and um, often stiffness with moving the joints. Um, and often it affects small joints like in the hands um, and the wrists, but inflammation can occur in, in any joint. All right. All right. Well, that's, that's a very general look at it. Um, can you tell us any specific symptoms that you would use to identify inflammatory arthritis? Um, so, as mentioned, the swelling um, is really a, a big feature um, compared to just um, osteoarthritis um, or wear and tear arthritis where there's no swelling. Um, with inflammatory, there's the swelling and the warmth and also sometimes difficulty with moving the joint and, and a lot of stiffness, especially in the hands, making a fist. Um, and it's often in conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis um, and psoriatic arthritis that you would you would see inflammatory arthritis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there um, different types of inflammatory arthritis then? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Penny, there's um, there's a uh, as I mentioned the um, rheumatoids and the psoriatic arthritis, but also gout can cause a inflammatory arthritis, which is caused by crystals being deposited within the joint, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a different process um, to uh, rheumatoid. Okay. And you can also get um, a arthritis associated with lupus or other connective tissue diseases, which can also sometimes have swelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Dr. George, I I'm just thinking can you tell us maybe some of the more common questions or concerns that you hear from patients when they come to you with rheumatoid arthritis or a form of inflammatory arthritis? Well, one of the questions I hear often is how to control their pain and how to treat the condition. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I usually explain um, the different treatment options that there are, um, and um, those include um, often. Um, immunosuppressive medications, so things like methotrexate um, or um, there are biologic medicines such as the injectable ones, what we call Embrel, which they all suppress your immune system um, and so they dampen down that um, the antibodies which sometimes cause these diseases. Mm -hmm. um, so these the, there are medications to treat the pain but also they um, um, reduce the progression of the disease so mm -hmm. that you don't get um, joints that become uh, deformed or what we call crippling so that patients don't develop disability. Um, and often patients ask me, well, how long do you have to take these medicines for? Um, right now, we don't have a cure and, you know, there are a lot of people working on that, um, but the best um, we can do right now is remission, which actually is a very good quality of life for our patients. They pretty much have a very normal quality of life except for going and seeing their doctor once in a while to get their medications and check on some labs. So um, there are treatments um, available and often they're taken indefinitely, um, but you know they have very good quality of life. Well, that's very helpful. So, so essentially what you're saying is it sort of blocks the response and then so that the disease can't progress Right, exactly. As, as it would normally. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. well, that's that's great to know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what about a specific type of arthritis? You mentioned gout earlier. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you would you treat gout differently from the what you just described, or can you expand on that just a little bit? Yes, um, gout is definitely treated differently, even though it's an inflammatory arthritis. As I mentioned, it's one that where there are uh, crystals deposited in the joint, and it's not an autoimmune process, so it's not really um, due to your, your body's mm -hmm. own immune system attacking the joints, but rather due to these crystals. So the approach is a little bit different, and in gout, um, there are high levels of uric acid in your blood, which can um, deposit in the joints. And so the idea mm -hmm. is, to, is to prevent gout attacks by reducing the uric acid levels and that's how you, um, that's why you would um, take medications like allopurinol 
or something else called febuxostat or euloric um, to, to mm -hmm. um, reduce those levels. But when you have a, um, an, a gout flare-up with the with the joint being suddenly swollen and red and very hot and painful, you have to take medications such as um, uh, indocin or prednisone um, or colchicine to treat that um, just for the short term. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a it's an approach of treating it right when it happens and a flare, and then treating it long term to prevent it from occurring. Mm -hmm. Well, is there any way you can prevent uh, another flare up? Are there any foods that you should or shouldn't eat? I mean, I've often heard mm -hmm. people say, you know, there are certain things that you should be eating or shouldn't. Can you tell us mm -hmm. if that's true or not? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, the commonest things that trigger gout attacks are um, alcoholic beverages, um, especially beer and wine are the common offenders. Um, there has also been some data that um, red meat and eating um, shellfish frequently also can trigger attacks. Um, in terms of what can um, imp you know prevent or improve, there's mm -hmm. some data for cherry juice um, um, being um, helpful, mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple of studies of of, um, of a non-fat um, skimmed milk also being helpful, although we don't know the quantities and things like that exactly that would help. So um, I would recommend avoidance of beer and wine as probably the most um, effective. Well, a lot of our audience may not like that, but <laughs> at the same time, if it's going to help help them have mm -hmm. a, a gout attack, that's definitely what they should mm -hmm. do. Well, um, thank you. So, Dr. George, we were we were really talking about gout, and I guess I'm sitting here thinking, wondering if you could really tell us a little bit about how you what the difference is when you is differences are rather when you diagnose gout or a different form of inflammatory arthritis, what would be the things you would look for that might be different? So when, I, um, when I'm evaluating a patient with gout, I look at their which joints are affected and um, how their attacks are. So if they're getting um, episodic, episodic attacks, so you know, lasting like uh, four or five days and it's exquisitely tender and then goes away on its own or with taking some medications, mm -hmm. um, that sounds more like a, an a gout attack, whereas rheumatoid arthritis tends to be a more um, ongoing thing that starts off gradually, gets worse and worse with like stiffness, not so dramatic. Um, and then, you know, when we look at the joints, it's often the the big toe um, it, that's affected in gout. Not always, but that's commonly where it first starts, mm -hmm. the first big toe. Um, with rheumatoid arthritis, it's often in the hands, the knuckles, um, and the um, wrist can be affected, and it's usually more symmetrical, so meaning on both b both the joints on each side are affected. Um, so that's one way. Then we would use also lab testing with rheumatoid arthritis. We would look for um, you know your lab tests for rheumatoid factor and, and other blood test inflammatory markers mm -hmm. um, to determine if, if a patient has rheumatoid arthritis. Um, for gout, um, often it's a diagnosis that needs uh, fluid from the joint, um, and that has to be looked under a microscope to look for crystals. Um, now, if your doctor um, sometimes, if they do an X-ray and ultrasound, they may be able to see some findings that could help with that diagnosis diagnosis of making, you know, a diagnosis scalp, but, mm -hmm. but technically um, it's getting fluid from a joint and looking under a microscope to look for the crystals. And the reason this is important is because there is another condition called pseudogout, where it's a different crystal um, that can form in a joint and, mm -hmm. and can give inflammation as well, and inflammatory arthritis, and so it's important to tell them apart because it would affect how it's treated. Um, and then psoriasis is a little bit easier to diagnose psoriatic arthritis because usually, usually patients have a diagnosis of psoriasis already. So that makes it easier. Well, thank you very much. I, I, I think what I'm hearing really is, you know, patients themselves cannot totally diagnose what's wrong <laughs> with them. And if any of these symptoms should occur, they should come to see a rheumatologist, correct? That's right, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Dr. George. Thank you.